This is the Critical Conversations podcast, a KPOV special project developed to feature unique perspectives and the courage it takes to go there, challenge mundane thought, and question the norm. Our guest today is Lori Aldhoff, who lost her daughter, Alyssa, in the Marjorie Stoneman High School shooting in Parkland, Florida in 2018. Lori is here to tell us about Alyssa's Law and the nonprofit Make Our Schools Safe that Lori and her husband, Alan, started as a proactive way to deal with the loss of their daughter, Alyssa, and to secure the safety of America's children in schools. We are introduced to Lori and Alyssa's Law by Emerson Levy, who is a mother herself and an environmental lawyer who is donating her time to make Alyssa's Law, law in Oregon, really important to note that Alyssa's Law addresses what went wrong that day. Facts like the shooter was in the building for over an hour, just like Texas. The radios didn't work as they were supposed to, same in Texas. 9-11 redundancies, and the school resource officer did nothing, also same in Texas. Welcome to the show, Lori. Where do we begin? Let's talk about Alyssa's Law. Thank you so much for having me here today. So Alyssa's Law is named after my daughter, Alyssa, who was tragically shot eight times in her English classroom at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on February 14th, 2018. On that tragic day, I texted my daughter. I told her to run and hide that help was on the way. Unfortunately, that help was delayed and didn't arrive fast enough. Alyssa's Law is a panic button that we want to empower all of our teachers to push in a life-threatening emergency situation. So whether it's a medical emergency or an active shooter situation, the teacher can push a button on their phone or a badge they wear around their neck or a hardwired button, and it's directly linked to law enforcement and a 911 center And it could be linked to 200 people all getting that there is a life-threatening emergency within seconds. It's mass notification within seconds. And once that button is pushed, it's geofenced to the area. Like when you order an Uber, they know exactly where to go. And so law enforcement will know exactly where that threat is coming from. So they can pull up cameras in the school so they could see what is going on and then properly tell their law enforcement officers what to do and where to go and to come in, take down the threat or EMS to come in and triage any of the victims. Yeah, that's remarkable. You know, it seems like something that should have been arranged long ago after the first school shooting. I have to believe that you believe in this passionately having lost a child. So uh, my husband and I, we turned our pain and grief into action. Right away, we started the nonprofit organization, Make Our Schools Safe. And we are just focusing on school safety because at the end of the day, the gun issue becomes too polarizing and we are still sending our kids to school and they need to go to school in a safe environment. And Make Our School Safe is passionate about continuing to create layers and layers of school safety protection to prevent the threat from getting into the school. And and then if there is a life-threatening emergency through Alyssa's law, that law enforcement will get there as quickly as possible. Time equals life. And those vital seconds is between life and death. And we want to make sure that law enforcement knows where to go. And then it's their job to be properly trained to engage and take down the threat. Yeah. You know, I think everybody complains a little bit about surveillance, but one place that we definitely need surveillance are in public places and most certainly when it's involving children. So I'm so happy that you're doing this. I know that you've, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I also want to make it clear that uh, this is a nationwide movement and the acronym MOSS, Make Our Schools Safe, is an important factor. Can you enlighten us a little bit about that? So MOSS wants to see Alyssa's Law as a standard level of school safety protection in every school across the country. So we've passed Alyssa's Law now in New Jersey, Florida, New York, 
And Texas has just implemented $17.1 million for panic buttons. And then Alyssa's law will go through the legislative process during session in Texas and hopefully be enacted into law. We do have a federal bill called the Safer Schools Act. We are looking for co-sponsors from our congressmen and women to co-sponsor the Safer Schools Act, which allows schools to do a risk assessment. And based on their vulnerabilities, they could apply for this federal funding to fix the issues, the safety problems at their school. So whether schools might not have a panic button, then this law would apply funding to help them get their panic button. I believe this is an absolute brilliant first step and congratulations to you and your husband and all the people that are involved in this. Uh, you know, and I was pleased to find out that Emerson Levy has been involved in this as well. uh, A local person here in Ben. Yes. Thank you so much, Emerson Levy for taking Alyssa's law and wanting to bring it to Oregon. It's so important that we help protect our kids in our schools. And thank you for making Alyssa's Law a priority for Oregon. I can't imagine that you've gotten any resistance from many of the other states. I would hope that all the other states are, uh, if they aren't signing on, they're beginning to think about signing on. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're going state by state um, and would love to do this federally. Um, however, it just the legislative process, as I'm sure you're aware, everything takes time. People have their priorities. But like I said, at the end of the day, we need to make sure that our schools are safe when we send our kids to school and that they come home alive. If you didn't mention it already, how far is this law come in Oregon? Are you do you have any idea where we're at in this situation? So we're. We're just starting, going to be starting the legislative process here in Oregon, Um, but it is a a priority, I know, for Emerson and other legislators, and I know that we will help to bring this as a labor of protection in our schools for Oregon students. It's a different world than what I grew up when I was a kid, and I still can't quite imagine a school shooting and my heart really goes out to you and all the other parents that have lost children. I, I don't know how to, how to even speak to that issue. Hi, sorry. Um, we talked earlier before we got on air about the establishment of Moss Clubs through high, every high school in the U.S. So we have Make Our School Safe Clubs where students in their high schools help to create the culture of safety within their schools. And we are working with I2P, who is connected with Homeland Security, to develop school safety projects through our Make Our School Safe Clubs. And we believe as more students that can engage in creating a culture of safety within their school so that they feel comfortable that they see something say something and we can prevent violence from happening before it happens and that it's very inclusive club everybody's accepted and we just want to empower our students to make sure school safety is a top priority of their school and that like things like somebody propping open a door with a little wedge okay that is not acceptable we need to make sure that all our doors to our school to our classroom doors are locked. And so school safety is about whether it's students or staff and teachers taking it upon themselves to make it a priority and make sure that there is lots of training surrounding the different school safety measures, like how to lock down an emergency situation and training, training, training. It's so important and vital, but We need to continue to create these layers of school safety protection and having make our school safe clubs where students are creating that culture of safety within their school is one of those layers of safety. Have you run into any opposition in this journey that you're taking? So like I think I said before, like it's not really opposition, but I think that it's the, what is the hot topic of the priority in maybe the legislators and what they believe and what their focus is. And, you know, again, my focus is school safety and 
you know, after February 14th, when the students uh, marched for our lives and there was a huge movement where the students came out and voted in record numbers. And that was truly amazing. But I, I always said that, can you imagine if their focus was specifically on school safety, how much more that they could have accomplished? You know, this is a nonpartisan issue that we all could agree that we need to send our students kids to school in a safe environment. And, and so, like I keep saying, at the end of the day, we need to continue to create layers of safety protection. And I'm not just talking about school hardening measures. I'm talking about mental health starting in elementary school. We need to get to the root cause of the problems for our students before they get older and, and do something violent or tragic and bring weapons to schools. So there's many things that we can implement in school safety, and I would love for our focus, the national attention, to be about creating safe schools. Yeah, it, there's just no question about it. And, uh, you know, this radio station has been involved in a lot of issues uh, revolving around homelessness and and other social issues and the one key factor is connection and i think the more we can all connect whether you're a student a teacher or a parent it's going to make a big difference so you know i hope that the continued organizing goes well do you see any stumbling blocks as you go forward um, I think, you know, there's one of me, <laughs> but with the help of amazing people like Emerson Levy to help me get this message out to Oregon, to push this through the legislation. And, um, you know, I need more volunteers and people around the country to help uh, make our schools safe. And the more that we can focus on getting Alyssa's law passed in every state, um, it's just that extra layer of school safety protection in a life-threatening emergency that we know that help is on the way. Yeah, it, it most definitely. I think uh, involvement and, you know, as is always the case with most community radio stations, we're all looking for volunteers. And sometimes it's it's just a small effort that makes a big difference. And I would imagine that's the case in the situation you're in. Yeah, we definitely um, love volunteers. Our website is makeourschoolsafe.org. We have a connect button, which has our volunteer handbook, where we have a lot of actionable steps on our website, makeourschoolsafe.org. People can sign up for our email blast. They can volunteer, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you and your concerns. You can start a Make Our School Safe Club at your school, sign our petition to pass Alyssa's Law nationwide, reach out to your congressman or congresswoman to be a co-sponsor for Alyssa's Law. And um, we would love the help. You know, we are a nonprofit organization only four years old, starting in 2018. And so the more people that are passionate also about making sure that their school is safe, um, we'd love to, for you to volunteer. And, you know, I think that it's very important for parents to actively participate and be aware of what is going on at their specific child's school, knowing what those layers of safety protection are, asking important questions from their principals, from their school board members, and, and see what they're doing. Are they locking the doors to the school? Do you have a perimeter fence so that somebody just can't walk right onto campus? Are the classroom doors being locked? Are behavioral threat assessments being done to uh, make sure that there aren't credible threats? Do you have a see something, say something program where someone can report something as themselves or anonymously? You know, these are important school safety measures that you should be asking these questions uh, at your schools to make sure that these layers of safety protection are being implemented. Yeah, most definitely. You know, this is the best way to make a, a definite positive out of something that's so terribly negative. You know, I, I can't imagine when I was a kid going to school that any of this could ever 
come to fruition. But the point is, is that the more we're connected, the more we talk about it, the more people that are involved, the better off we're all going to be. And um, many thanks to you and Emerson for taking on this challenge. I hope that it's a short trip to success. So thank you. (laughs) You bet. Please tell our listeners one more time how they can get involved in this. For sure. So please follow us on our social media handles. We have Facebook, Make Our School Safe 17, Instagram, Make Our School Safe. Follow me at Twitter, Lori Aladef. And most importantly, please go to our website, makeourschoolsafe.org. And sign up for our email list. You can donate, volunteer, sign a petition, uh, check out our volunteer handbook because we're, there's many ways that you know we can collaborate together to help uh, develop a school safety prom fundraiser for for your school. You know, maybe there is something that you have a school safety project that you want to implement in your school. And we would love to collaborate with you. And most importantly, we want to see Alyssa's Law passed in Oregon. Amen. Couldn't, couldn't agree more fully. It's been great having you on air today. I wish you nothing but speed. I hope that this can all come about in a, a relative short amount of time. Thanks again, Lori. Thanks to both you and your husband for your energy and your service in this incredibly difficult issue. Thank you. You've been listening to a KPOV Critical Conversation. To hear more engaging interviews on important topics, please visit kpov.org slash critical conversations.